Welcome to another edition of the Bible in the News. This is Paul Billington on Saturday morning, November the 14th, and the news has just come through reporting terrorist attacks in France. The Islamic State terror group has reportedly claimed responsibility for the coordinated shootings and bombings across Paris, announces Britain's Express newspaper. At least 149 people are said to have been slaughtered in the French capital, said the paper, November 14, 2015. The Daily Telegraph said that France is fighting jihadists worldwide, has one of the largest Muslim populations in Europe, and arguably the most divided society. It also has a steady stream of guns pouring in from across continental Europe's porous borders. It is a potent, explosive mix, as shown by the Charlie Hebdo attacks of January and now the Paris shootings. This is for Syria, one of the Paris attackers reportedly said, but he could have said it was for Mali, for Libya or Iraq. Indeed, France takes pride in its proactive stance against Islamic worldwide, says the paper, especially in the face of what is frequently seen as British and American retreat. Over 10,000 French troops are currently deployed abroad, over 3,000 in Western Africa, 2,000 in Central and, two, and 3,200 in Iraq. And last week, President Francois Hollande uh, announced that France will deploy an aircraft carrier in the Persian Gulf to assist the fight against the Islamic State in Iraq, the Levant, ISIL, setting him on a collision course with the Islamist leaders. President Hollande called the massacre an act of war. His statement comes just over a week after President Obama of the United States said that he was not at war with Islam. Refugees from the Middle East, with terrorists mingled with them, have been streaming into Europe, carrying out the threat from ISIS made earlier this year to send thousands of migrants to the continent. The Paris terror strike comes after ISIS terrorists claimed to bring down a Russian passenger jet on October the 31st with over 200 people on board, a claim that is supported by British and American intelligence and evidence which now seems to be quite certain. As these judgments come upon Europe, we should note the fact that they do so just as the European Union is becoming more hostile to Israel. As Israel has suffered weeks of terror and stabbings and people purposefully being run over, the media has slammed Israel for responding to its defense. The Europe and Europe has uh, commenced a campaign of economic boycott against the settlements. According to the Yahoo News Service, the Israeli Prime Minister likened the labeling of goods from the Israeli settlements to the Nazi boycott of Jewish businesses in the 1930s. It certainly does, it does, certainly does repeat that anti-Jewish method of discrimination. The labelling of products of the Jewish state by the European Union brings back dark memories. Europe should be ashamed of itself, Prime Minister Netanyahu said as he wrapped up a visit to Washington. It took an immoral decision this will not advance peace, it will certainly not advance truth and justice, it's wrong, he said. He drew the same com comparison in September when he said that Israelis remember history and we remember what happened when the products of Jews were labelled in Europe. After the Nazis came to power in Germany in 1933, they imposed a boycott against the country's Jews issuing orders and posting signs telling the public not to buy from them. Today the settlements are deemed illegal under the international law and considered a, a major stumbling block to peace efforts since those in the West Bank and East Jerusalem are built on land Palestinians see as part of their future state. But Israeli Energy Minister Yuval Stenitz called the labelling measure disguised anti-Semitism. But that is not how U.S. President Obama saw it, however. 
his administration gave approval of the EU decision to label goods from the West Bank, that is Judea, Samaria, East Jerusalem and the Golan, but denied that this was a boycott. But of course, for those who get Obama's message, the fact is that it will mean a boycott of settlement goods, goods such as the well-known Ahava Cosmetics from the Dead Sea area. All this boycotting is supposed to assist the Palestinian Arabs in getting rid of the Jews out of the West Bank. They want it to be Jew-free. Violence in Hebron this week is but another means of persuading Jews to leave. But neither violence nor economic boycott will succeed in sending Jews back to Europe, New York or anywhere else. Over 2,500 years ago, the prophets of Israel spoke about the time when Israel would return to their land, and that includes returning to the biblical heartland of Judea and Samaria. We can read it for ourselves in Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 13 to 15. God says through the prophet, I will bring them out from the people, and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land, and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, and in all the inhabited, place, inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. As we have pointed out on other occasions, the mountains of Israel happen to be the so-called West Bank and it has been long recognized by Bible expositors that Israelites would settle there in the future. For example, in 1868, a century before Israel occupied the so-called West Bank, one writer said this, It may be remarked here that there will have been a considerable gathering of Israelites upon the mountains of Israel before the invasion of the country by Gog and his capture of Jerusalem. That's Eureka, Volume 3, by John Thomas. We know from Joel, Chapter 3, Verses 1 and 2, that the return of Israel to the biblical heartland is in God's purpose. The passage reads, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among their nations, and parted my land. Now, when terrorists strike Israelis, Europeans support and reward them, demanding that Israel give up their homes on the mountains of Israel. And when that doesn't happen, the settlers, who God brought there as a result of the events of June 1967, must be penalized, and their merchandise, bo merchandise boycotted. Europeans know how to do that, because the Nazis taught them. Why do they not make room for the Islamic migrants flooding into their own lands? When it comes to justice and truth, the Europeans still have a lot to learn, and that goes for Barack Hussein Obama of the United States also. Terrorism is a dreadful thing. It is an act of war, as the French president has said, and war means that people get killed, often innocent people. It has been happening in Israel as Palestinians, usually Islamic, have waged a relentless war upon the Jewish state. This has continued since the 1920s. Well, now Europeans are on the receiving end of it. Europe has brought judgment upon itself, and that judgment will intensify as God gathers all nations to Armageddon, and when he pleads for his people and for his heritage Israel, who the nations scattered, and insist on parting God's land with a two-state solution. See Joel chapter 3. Thank you for listening or reading. Visit this site again next week, biblemagazine.com. <laughs>